welcome to yet another episode of vectors in this episode we'll still talk about vector multiplication i told you there are two kinds of vector multiplication right last time i did the dot product this time i will do another one called as the cross product so vector multiplication and this time i'm going to talk about something called as the cross product so here it is What is the meaning of cross product? Well, imagine you have two vectors with you, say vector A and vector B. Again, the angle between them is theta. We define cross product A cross B, we'll do it over here, A cross B as magnitude of A times magnitude of B times sine of angle theta between them multiplied by n cap. Hmm, what is the meaning of this n cap? Well, remember uh, last time, I think some time back, I told you that if you have any vector a, it can be written as the magnitude of a multiplied by a unit vector a cap. If you remember this, then it's easy to understand what this is. Well, you see this part over here, represents the magnitude. This is the magnitude of the cross product and this part gives you the direction for the cross product. All right, so we now have to understand what is the direction? How do we calculate the direction? And the direction is given by what we call as the right hand rule. And the right hand rule is pretty simple. Look, if you have two vectors, which is given like this, here is vector A and here is vector B. So the red one is A and this is B. And if you want to calculate what is A cross B, then you, you take your right hand and you use your right hand rule in such a way that the four encircling fingers give you the direction of the cross, then the thumb represents the direction of the angle. Thumb represents the direction of N cap. You get that? So imagine in this particular case, for example, in this case, you see A cross B is this way. So imagine the rotation, the rotation is in this direction. The rotation is um, clockwise as seen from above. Therefore, you take your right hand rule and also do it clockwise and the thumb gives you the direction of the cross product. So you see in this example, N cap is directed into the paper. Okay, what would have happened if you had taken B cross A? Look, what would happen if you had B cross A? A. Well, that would be magnitude of B times magnitude of A times sine theta into, now when you consider B cross A, look at the direction. B cross A is this way. So the encircle is in this direction, the anti-clockwise direction. B is trying to move towards A. So B cross A points upwards. The thumb points towards you now. Therefore, if downwards is n cap, this is what? Minus n cap. So you get minus n cap. So this tells you a very simple rule about cross products. And that is, if you take a cross b, it is equal to the same as b cross a, but negative. So it's not commutative. Okay, so your final answer, that is the cross product is a vector. Hence, cross products are also called as vector products. Suppose I consider vector A this way and I consider vector B this way. The angle between them is 90 degrees. Let's say vector A has a magnitude of 10 units and vector B has a magnitude of 20 units. What is A cross B now? Well, A cross B, from the definition, is magnitude of A, that is 10, times magnitude of B, that is 20, into sine of the angle between them, which is sine 90, and that turns out to be 200 into one. And of course, I have to multiply by n cap, so, 
what direction is now end cap? Well, you see A is trying to cross towards B. So A is rotating towards B. So imagine the rotation. The rotation is now again clockwise. So use your right hand rule and the thumb points into the book, into the page. Therefore N is into the page. And the way we show into the page is using a cross mark. That's the direction. Okay. What would happen if the angle between A and B reduced? Well, you can see that as the angle in de decreases, sine of that particular angle also decreases. Therefore, the cross spread would reduce. What would happen if the angle was, say, 0 degrees? So if the angle became 0, then sine 0 is 0. Hence, A cross B would also be 0. Ooh, do you notice? that cross product gives you exactly the opposite thing for compared to dot products. Dot product was maximum when the two vectors were parallel to each other, when the angle was zero. But cross product is minimum, it's zero. It's maximum when it is 90 degrees. So cross product is all about perpendicularism. Or in other words, cross product is all about rotation. You see, when two vectors are perpendicular to each other, that's when you get maximum rotation from one vector to another as the vectors start coming closer and closer, meaning the angle starts becoming smaller and smaller, then you don't get much rotation. You have only little rotation. So the cross product reduces. And when the two vectors are exactly parallel to each other, there is no longer any rotation needed to align themselves. And therefore the cross product becomes zero. In these examples, we will just concentrate on getting the direction of A cross B, okay? So imagine your vector A is in this direction, here is vector A, and suppose vector B is directed this way. Can you tell me what is the direction of A cross B? That is the direction of N cap? Well, that is easy, right? Because we now know A cross B is just the rotation. So it wants to rotate this way. The rotation is clockwise, and therefore the thumb points towards you, and hence, a cross B is out of the book. Let's take another example. Let's take a different example. Let's say vector A is directed out of the book. This is vector A. This is example number two. This was example number one. Vector A is directed out of the book. And let's say vector B is directed towards the right. What is now A cross B? Mm. Let's see. Vector A is directed this way, out of the book. And vector B is directed this way. Notice when the vector A and vector B are directed this way, you have to again cross to go from A to B. But when you look, look at it from the top view, from here, you can see when you cross it, the thumb points upwards. Do you see that? As I rotate, I'll tell you another way to think about cross products. See, what you need to understand is, the moment you are given two vectors, you imagine one plane that contains the two vectors. See, for example, in this case, when A is coming out and B is towards the right, the plane is this way, this is the plane, all right? And your cross product will always be perpendicular to the plane, remember that. Therefore, your answer in this case will either be this way, so here are the two vectors, and your answer will either be this way, or it's going to be this way. Once you get that, once you narrow it down, then it's easy. Then you do A cross B. So it's gonna go cross like this. And then use your right hand rule to understand the crossing. So you see the crossing is happening this way. And the thumb now represents the direction. And therefore, the answer is upwards. Vector A is directed downwards. This is vector A. And vector B is, um, Let's see, vector B is directed into the board or into the page. Here is vector B. Try to do this yourself for a while. Just, just think. Do you have it? I hope you have it. Look, now vector A is directed downwards and vector B is directed into the, into the book, into the page, this way. All right? It's a little difficult for me to show it to you, but somewhere like this. Okay? Now, notice the page, the plane that contains the two vectors is this, this one, this plane. Therefore, your answer is going to be perpendicular to the plane. That means either towards the left 
are towards the right. You see that? This is the plane that contains them. Okay, now we want A cross B. So here is A, the black one is A, and it's trying to cross towards B. So you go towards B this way. So it's trying to cross towards B. Look at the rotation. Can you see the rotation? The rotation is this way. All right, it's like this. So, ah, towards the right. Look at the rotation. So A is trying to move towards B. I think that's this is the best way to understand. Here is A and here is B. It's trying to go towards B. So whoosh, the answer is towards the right. So this is A cross B. Um, what would happen if you have vector A that comes out of the book and you have vector B that goes into the book? I want you to try this one. If you get the answer, let me know. See you next time. Take care.